And you can see they're starting to pack in a little nectar on the very edges of it. Lorna McAllister is a biologist and beekeeper at the Butterfly Pavilion in Westminster, Colorado. As a researcher, she studies invertebrate ecology and conservation. She manages about 20 beehives. The pavilion's profits from its honey sales benefit conservation, conservation that extends beyond butterflies and beyond Colorado's borders. The Butterfly Pavilion's Bees for Elephants project has brought McAllister to Tanzania in eastern Africa. It's a cross-country trip in partnership with the Katie Adamson Conservation Fund to work with the Tanzanian Elephant Foundation, or TEF. The project uses beehive fencing to mitigate conflicts between people and elephants. The elephants will come into these communities and look for food or water, and then that causes conflict, which could be really dangerous for both humans and elephants. The competition for resources causes the communities to see elephants as destroyers and murderers. Lamek Nkaburo founded TEF in 2019 after identifying communities with the highest rates of human-elephant conflict, usually near national parks and protected forests. Hawa Saidi Shomvi of Kisemo tells us that the elephants don't just raid her village's crops, they injure and sometimes kill people. And normally the elephants uh, come here to raid the crops, and normally they come near the harvesting season. The fences work like this. Villagers hang beehives on wires surrounding crops and on the outskirts of populated areas. When elephants hit the trip wires, the wild bees fly out to defend their hives. They attack and sting the elephant's sensitive skin around their eyes, ears, mouths, and trunks. The bees are relentless. So when you open up a hive here, it is like a hailstorm of bees coming at you, which is why these fences work, because the bees are defensive enough of their colonies that they're actually able to scare away elephants. These conservationists begin their journey with a hive hanging project for two communities near the town of Kisiwani. With their crops destroyed, the residents' hunger is severe. But they're welcome, warm and genuine. The goal on this day hang 50 beehives on wire fences surrounding the community farms. Speaking Swahili, the common language here, the TEF team gets to work showing the villagers how to assemble and prep the hives to attract bees. A Tanzanian carpenter built every hive. This is more than just a local event. Thomas Katunzi is the regional wildlife officer here. We are very much thankful for this and we really appreciate it. And you can see even farmers are happy. Everyone here is working, means that they accepted this project. The work is complex and strenuous. By lunchtime, all 50 hives are in place. And within minutes, wild swarms of honeybees start to move into their new homes. And right now, they're very gentle. Like, you can put your hand and move them. But once they make this their home, they'll defend it. So once the elephants start coming, they won't be this gentle. Oh, it was awesome. It was one, shocking, and two, like the best like reward you could get for a very hard day of work is to just see the fence immediately working. The beekeeping basics class continues well into the afternoon with equipment donated by the Butterfly Pavilion. The beekeepers learn how to overcome their fear and how to protect themselves. There's something that people are afraid of, but really, they're just bees trying to live. And so it's great that they're able to be used as this tool that provides people honey, but also provides a defense system for them. You don't have to be afraid of the bees, you just have to know how to manage them. Managing existing fences is also on this team's agenda. They head south to the village of Kisemo, 
where nightly elephant raids have left plants uprooted and farmers racing to harvest their chickpea crops. It's food they need to feed their families. Without the crops, the community would suffer from hunger, uh, from famine. The elephants can be killed. This kind of conflict also create the negative relationship between the communities and uh, the wildlife authorities. Why are you, you going to support saving something that's literally coming in and stealing what might be your only food for months or your only source of income? Yeah, it's a very dangerous and real situation. So really when an elephant comes in, it can be just devastating. For projects like this to succeed, communities must support them 100%. TEF gives these people the tools and training they need to succeed as beekeepers. Here in the town of Kisaki, that includes honey harvesting, filtering and filling jars, labeling, marketing, and even practicing a sales pitch. <laughs> so I think this project gives people a way to, to see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, like, oh, if we do this, we'll make money, we won't have to, you know, lose everything. If we have a crop raid, it'll be okay. But the women's involvement has been really great, and the women are really interested in doing the work and helping out, so it's been great to see that. These fences have proven effective in changing elephant behavior, with a success rate of 80%. Because the elephants have special memory, they can transfer those experiences to other individuals and they avoid the areas and they use another route and avoid the, the areas or completely. But elephants can be persistent and smart. The enclosures must be complete. Because they are very intelligent, they are very clever, sometimes they can walk around the fence, they can follow the fence and find the easiest way to enter the farmlands. The Maasai community of Tinga Tinga proudly claims the longest beehive fence in Tanzania. More than 240 hives protect the farms and ranches in the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro. Richard Leiser explains how traditionally Maasai life has revolved around raising and grazing large herds of cattle. It's been a source of income and an important part of community building. But climate change, loss of grazing land, and other factors have forced the Maasai to transform from cattle ranchers to crop cultivators and beekeepers. The honey harvest uh, from it will improve their uh, livelihood through honey harvest and sell. They hope that the fence will create the positive views and a positive attitude toward elephant and other wildlife conservation. Roughly 60,000 elephants live in Tanzania. They are a keystone species and function as ecological engineers. They knock over trees, opening up the savanna, disperse seeds, feed birds and beetles with their dung, create pathways for people and other wildlife, and much more. Without elephants, ecosystems would fail, and all living things in that ecosystem would suffer. That's why this project is so important. We are very much thankful, and uh, we promise that we will be able to make sure that this fence is sustainable. We will be also responsible to monitor all the activities that are done in the fence, to make sure that we clean the fence and make this fence sustainable. My hope is that these fences will spread to areas that need them, and I'm hoping that it will reduce conflict in Tanzania with elephants and that people will be able to just appreciate them for the good things that they bring and not have so much stress and worry about these you know, beautiful creatures that they should not have to fear. We really appreciate the support we are getting from Butterfly Pavilion and the Kate Adamson Conservation Fund. And we hope that they will continue to support this project to make them sustainable, to help the communities, and also to protect the elephants. The Bees for Elephants project promotes coexistence, conservation, and cross-cultural community building. <laughs> It's a way to help communities survive and keep elephants alive, all with the help of honeybees 
and their hides. Oh,